Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to WIC Live. We are recapping Beyond the Wall. I am Kayla Kinnearum here with our WinterIsComing.net editor-in-chief, Dan Selke. And the big man's here with us today, our boss, Patrick <laughs> Allen. Welcome. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Good to be back on WIC Live. It's hey, been a Patrick. minute for you. Yeah, it's been a little while. It has. You've been on the show since uh, season six. <laughs> and now here we are a year later, over a year later with season seven, episode six, Beyond the Wall, the penultimate episode of the season. It was big, it was bold, it was cold, it was snowy, it was uh, <laughs> um, controversial. Mm. Patrick, Kayla, any immediate reactions to the big events of last night's Game of Thrones Spectacular? I mean, where do you even start? There were so many things. What stuck out to you most? Uh, just kind of when Danny finally got there and saw everything and, and she was talking to John at the end and was like, well, once you've seen it, and I was just right. kind of like, that's what he's been telling, that's what everybody's been telling you. At the same time, though, I mean, I liked, the, I mean, I wouldn't just buy zombie sight unseen. I think she had to see it. I sympathize when she, I mean, why would a stranger with great hair tells you there's zombies, <laughs> you just accept it? Like, no, you do have to see it. So I, I got that she wouldn't really be fully on board until she saw it. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I thought it was, you know, it was cool to see her fly up there, do a little damage, and uh, obviously a big major plot point had to happen, and it sort of changed the game, so to speak, if you were feeling like, Danny and company had all the, you know, they were holding all the cards. That's not the, the case anymore. No, it's not. All right. A lot happened. Let's walk through it bit by bit, get our opinions, our uh, thoughts, our feelings, our emotions. If you guys have comments, queries, anything, put them in the chat. We are manning it. We got Mark Carmen manning it. We got myself manning it. Um, Julie Davies. Hey, Julie. Loved every minute of it. <laughs> Naturally. Renee Davis Tracy. Hey, guys. Fabulous episode again. <laughs> And there is some controversy, y'all, about um, some people are a little down on it, and we'll address some of that, too. I thought we'd start. You are one in particular. Because I am a pedantic nerd, and some <laughs> things um, rub me a little the wrong way. But we'll get into it. First, let's start with some of the, uh, uh, one of the more innocuous parts, just harmless parts. Um, there was a lot of bromance talk this episode. Mm. We had our Jon Snow and the Jonettes going north of the wall. North of the wall for East Watch, and there's a, plenty of discussion between the seven of them. Did any of these conversations stand out to you, and why, Kayla? Um, probably the one with Jon Snow and Jorah. That was probably the best one, I thought. Yeah, because he was like, this belongs to you, and he's like, no, my father was ashamed of me, he gave it to you, you need to keep it, give it to your offspring, whatever. Um, I think it was like a respectful moment, because yeah. Jon is the kind of guy who's, you know, dignified and will offer this sword back to the son of the guy who gave it to him. And then Jorah is also a dignified guy and will say, no, guy, so. keep it. Yeah. So I felt like that would bond them, like they respect each other a little more. Patrick, did it... That was probably one of the more mature conversations of... Yes. <laughs> Some of the little... others were a little more stupid but the suit <laughs> of the pants. Did it bother you? Because you're like a book reader, you know the lore and stuff. I was a little surprised that Jon wasn't more mad at Jorah to start, because John usually kind of follows his father, uncle's, Ned Stark's lead, mm. and Ned prosecuted Jorah for slaving, but John seemed to be on his, on his soul train from the start. Yeah, I mean, I think that at this point, John is just, we don't have time for like this, okay, yeah, you tried to sell a slave, like we've got bigger things to worry about. Sure. Um, you know, had things been different, and you know, he was just Lord in the North or whatever, I'm sure that maybe he would, do the right thing and, and prosecute Jorah. But at this point, he needs every man he can get. He understands that. Right. I thought it was an interesting scene. Uh, you know, I think it's a conversation they had to have. If you don't have it, it's just sort of weird. It's like, it's that's his sword. He knows it's a sword. So it, I guess they just felt like they had to discuss it. Um, right. So, you know, it was, I didn't think it was of any great consequence, but no, no, it, it added worked, to the, but... the bonding that I think they were going for with all the characters. I, I think it did work too. I mean, I also thought that, you know, John respected Jorah's father a lot, the first Lord Commander, so he kind of gave that respect back. He said a lot of father figures are John. How about the conversation between uh, Brienne and Tormund was one of the more funny, kicky ones. With the Hound? Yes, I'm sorry. Brienne, between yeah. about, uh, Brienne. about Brienne, between Tormund First of all, and the Hound. The Hound is my favorite out of this group. Like his, he was a highlight. His comebacks, yeah. I laugh out loud after everything he says. <laughs> well, he just says the c word all the time. <clears throat> yeah. He's got that in his back pocket. I had a friend who was watching it, and he said, you know, the, the mention of the c word has gone way up." And I was like, "To be fair, 80% of it is from the Hound." Yeah. Then that's, that's his word. I mean, that's <laughs> his word. It's you know, his shit. But uh, yeah, every comeback he has is just like <laughs> one word, and then it's done. Um. I thought that was funny when he made the connection. He's like, are you talking about Brienne? And it was immediate. Yeah. Like, and he he's knew like, who he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, so you know her? He's like, 
I'm familiar. <laughs> and just like kept going. Great actor. But okay, just an observation. Why don't these guys wear hats? Don't they know that'll keep them warmer? Ooh, okay. Actually, there was an Gabriel interview was about the only that. One with a hat. That's true. They did not wear headgear. Daenerys was riding a dragon and them. didn't have earmuffs. Right. Um, there was an interview with Kit Harrington where he he brought that up. And he just said that I it mean, was especially like the hound, where he's like missing chunks of hair, and it's like yeah. hitting his head. That, that, that a few seasons back, the producer just decided, look, you all should be wearing hats, but it's TV. And we need to see your faces. Huh. Like that was the decision they made. Okay. I don't know if I agree with it, but that's it's just not that's very why you They'd don't see hats so ahead of the cold. I mean, I agree with you. I I would sometimes I feel like they do things because they don't assume enough of the audience. I mean, like, we, I'd be happier if they kept it realistic and they wore hats. Gendry had a hood. He did have a hood. I mean, there are dragons flying around. I mean, like, <laughs> so I think we can set aside the frostbite. Believability I hate is, that excuse. Uh, <laughs> like, because even though there are dragons, this is a show that's been built on details and keeping it grounded in reality. So, so whenever someone says, like, oh, but there are dragons, like, so what? So, uh, someone in armor still can't just not drown when they sink into a lake. Sure. Is, is my opinion. And they were also that. like walking for half the episode to get to where they needed to be, and then Gendry like ran back in two seconds. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he got back awfully quick. I mean, he did claps when he got there. Sure. He did claps. He was, he was tired. We'll just have the timeline a little later. Um, any other of the conversations stood out? We had uh, Gendry trying to get justice for that time the Brotherhood sold him to a witch, and the hound basically being like, shut up, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I think that they were just trying to sort of, these characters haven't all been together mm -hmm. at the same time. I mean, in the last episode, mm -hmm. a couple of them weren't in a, a, in a nice cell. So, you know, I think it was just like, right. let's bond these guys together a little bit so that, you know, when the, when the crap hits the fan, we'll care a little bit more. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah. Um, by the way, Michael Collins has a comment on the bromances. The bromance angles were great, he says. They helped with the natural tensions between some of these comrades and it set up possible future clashes when they aren't forced to work together. That's an interesting one. Anybody here potentially could clash Kayla in the future? Um, I feel like there could be a lot of clashes, yes. Sure. Among the, the guys? Yeah, among the dudes. Mm. I, mean, I mean, at this point, they all have to work together because it's all of their lives right. at stake. So I hope they stay as a tight-knit group. I kind of, Beric Dundarian was pushing his uh, Lord of Light proselytization on John. A little hard. It, it, remind, yeah. it reminded me of like I don't know if that's patch if, guy. Yes. If, if, if what's that? The patch guy. Yes, patch. eye patch. <laughs> if like someone is I don't know trying to like bring you the good news and John wasn't quite buying into it about the Lord of Light, saying that and I I find it hard to buy into a religion where everything is so vague and they're always telling you you have a destiny they don't know what. Uh, should John? Try, uh, what's the word? accept the Lord of Light as his Lord and Savior since he got brought back and everything? I don't think that it's so much about the Lord of Light specifically, mm -hmm. if there is a Lord of Light. It's more about the fact that a little bit of faith is a, is a good thing. And mm -hmm. whether or not he's actually trying to get John to believe in the Lord of Light or he's just saying, hey, look, man, stuff happens, can't all be coincidence. Maybe you ought to just go with it a little bit and believe, I think, is really what he was kind of trying to get at. Right. And then he kind of got through to John when he put it in terms of, you know, our mission on Earth is to protect people, which kind of got into John's right. central nervous system, which is what he does, <laughs> and he came around to it a little bit. I think else? Let's see. I think the last one we kind of had was uh, Jorah and Thoros of Mir, the Daily Departed, talking about the time Thoros of Mir charged Pike, looking awesome and blackout drunk, can't even remember. Uh, Thoros of Mir, I actually liked him this episode. I kind of, it's kind of too bad we didn't see more of him. Because he's a fun little um, combination of traits, right? You got the, you know, he's a religious adherent, but he's also kind of a sloppy drunk. And uh, I know that your wife likes him a lot. Was she upset she, by this? She was. She moved to the edge of the couch and stayed there for the rest of the episode. Is he top knot? <laughs> he's top knot, yeah. yeah. I, I guess it, the, the thing that jumped out at me about Thoros is that he... And maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting confused with the books a little bit, but the, he, he was sort of like a, a drunk and kind of a, you know, a jolly guy, and then he got more serious after he was able to bring back Dundarian, and you know, now he was sort of back to being fun, goofy Thoros again. Um, when he was laying there, I, I couldn't help but wonder, 
Like, I mean, hey, have you ever thought about teaching Dundarian how to bring <laughs> somebody back? Like, now would be a really good time for him to have that skill as well, or do you have to be a, a priest? I don't know, but it was something I, I feel like they should have maybe even just mentioned, like... I mean, I, can, I think that plays into the whole Lord of Light thing being so mysterious and vague. Like, I'm not sure he knows exactly how he does it. He just says the prayers, and the Lord of Light works his magic. Right. And Alessandra, too, when she did it, she didn't know what she was doing. She just kind of did what she could, and it worked. And then she was shocked afterwards. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen Thoros come back. I mean, Me he too. Wasn't, he wasn't too jacked up. I mean, they cauterized the wound. He was able to run a little bit um, as they escaped. So, but I guess he's he's gone. One of the kinder way to goes, kinder yeah. ways to go. Yeah. Kayla, what do you think of the polar bear, zombie polar bear? <laughs> Uh, attack. Well, it certainly got my attention because when they have these long dialogue scenes, I mm -hmm. like we know go elsewhere and have to go back and rewind and then really focus in on what they're saying. So when that happened, them. I was like, I'm focused. You have my attention. Um, it was kind of like the what is it the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, The Revenant. Revenant, yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen that. That's several what times. that scene reminded me of a little bit. Uh, but no, it was very intense. It, I thought it was good. Did you like it? Yeah, the, the, yeah, that was fun. It was a. Uh, I think that's like something like you don't really expect. Like, why not? Zombie polar bear. That's fun. <laughs> that's something new. Can we talk about how when they left, there was just seven of them? And mm -hmm. then this episode, there were just a bunch of other like guys there who were just there to die. It was like an episode yeah. of Star clear. Trek. You clearly oh, had the ones right. that were totally. going to fall off yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. You, yeah. Like, you see, like, who's that guy up there? Who's that guy back there? <laughs> I like, had a, yeah, I had a wife I mean, and see who was dying in each little part. There were more than seven when they left. When they left the door, you, there were other people. But yeah, it was... It was almost shameless the way that, like, you're not getting out the of this. Right. Yeah. There was like, that last guy who, like, fell right, right at the very end. I was like, almost made it, man. <laughs> almost. <laughs> I mean, let me ask you this, Patrick. Do you think... It, it, it bugged me a little bit, because Game of Thrones kind of builds its reputation on killing characters and not doing the predictable thing. Here, like, seven characters we know went north of the wall. The one, let's be honest, the least important one died, and the rest made it back okay. They're going out of their way to keep everyone alive this season. You think? Yeah. Yeah, it, it feels a bit like that to me, too. But, but there's nobody left. And my That's wife and true. I had this conversation last night, actually, we were talking about mm -hmm. it. She said she felt like, well, you know, it used to be you didn't know who was going to live or die, and now it just feels like there's no way anything bad's going to happen to John or Danny. And, I think that's not necessarily true. Down the line, something could happen, but it does feel like they kind of killed off all the principal characters, and the ones that are left need to stick around, and the, the only ones who are vulnerable are kind of the, you know, I mean, maybe the Hound, somebody no. like that. Could I mean, I mean you know, they got the Hound, they got Jorah, they got Gendry, they got... Um, I mean, Gendry, Gendry's been like You can kill like Brienne, you can kill Podrick, you can kill Brod, you can kill Varys, you can kill, um, you know, Littlefinger. I just, I think there are plenty of characters left. I don't think the Hound should die until he comes face to face with Arya again. Oh, I don't either. But I'm just saying, I think there are Davos, Missal and Melisandre, uh, Missandei, Grey Worm. I think there are characters on the in-between you could definitely kill. Sure. It sounds like Melisandre and Varys are going to die. It does, but I think that they're safe in that. I mean, I, I would love to see another main character die. Hmm. <laughs> Not Damn. because I love bloodshed, just because I want, I want to be thrilled and uh, surprised by the twist. I mean, it's hard, to, <laughs> it's hard to see seriously getting through this thing. It is. Um, intact. Jamie almost died. Jamie, didn't? yeah, Jamie's brave and stupid. At the beginning, um, he, or when they were filming last year, wasn't it rumored that maybe Sansa was going to be out? Or? Yeah, it's always rumored. Sansa, I mean, I... Grown, grown fond of Sansa, but yeah, she could go. Cersei, Jamie, I mean, John and Danny. I think, I think John, Danny, and Tyrion. We're all assuming they're going to probably make it a long way. But um, Bran, Robot Boy. At this point, I hope nothing happens to Bran. Bran, right? Yeah, Bran. I don't care about. <laughs> He's just getting more irritating. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Thank you, Funko, for sending this <laughs> Bran figurine. Um, he shouldn't be standing. I know he doesn't. Okay. Oh, I know. See, he, he, does, he doesn't stand well, that's the one time a small design flaw actually works in favor yeah. of uh, the figurine. <laughs> um, let's transfer, talk about two of those big characters, Arya and Sansa, who are at Winterfell, chilling out. Kayla, could we have a Sorora side in our new future, in near future? Which is the murder of a sister, by the way, for your mean? vocabulary, maybe it's out there. <laughs> you know, like fratricide, patricide. I surely hope not, Dan. I don't like this at all. I hate that they're at odds. I hate that 
Um, Arya is kind of scary lately. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, well, yeah, she, so she basically read the note to her, but he called Sansa out, was like, mm -hmm. I would never go against my family. I would never turn my back on them. You did this. Our dad's dead because of you. Blah, 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 blah. Um, did you buy that? Did you buy Arya's anger? Yeah, I understood where she was coming from, but I also know what Sansa, the position she was in and what she's been through, and she really didn't have a choice. She was like, right. well, did they have a knife to your throat? But... It was I mean, still not in a good situation, so. It wasn't. I mean, the, the, the reason this story is going to get getting some criticism from fans um, is because, I don't know, a lot of them don't seem to, they're on Sansa's side and they don't see why all the anger from Arya. It's, they think it's like too much. Yeah, I see that. Patrick, how about you? Well, you know, Arya learned a lot of things when she was at, you know, with the Faceless Men, and one of them was not compassion. It's um, true. And <laughs> she's an know, assassin. We saw shades of this earlier. It's been a weird kind of season for her because she had this sort of like really great and light conversation with the Lannister soldiers, where and she, the hot pie too. It, it, mm -hmm. No, but see, I didn't think the hot pie scene was. I thought that was actually completely different. She was Ooh. she was much colder towards hot pie. Um, she was very business like she was. when she saw him. Um, which was sort of weird as she was sort of laughing just, just a little bit before that with the Lannister soldiers. Um, it was definitely Arya before she goes into uh, the, the temple and be becomes a faceless man, like she would have had a much different reunion with Hot Pie. Um, and she was a very emotional and very caring person uh, and wore her heart on her sleeve. So it's, I think it's actually kind of hard to tell um, what her motivation might be here whether or not she's putting on a little bit um, because, right. because she has become so calculating that it seems like some of these conversations with Sansa border on emotional and I don't think that she's that, that girl anymore. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on but I, I did start to wonder if she's just trying to scare Sansa, like a scared straight kind of thing mm -hmm. a little bit. like. Look, don't get too like don't get too cozy with Littlefinger, and maybe that's why she gave her the dagger, um, which was an interesting move. Yeah. That, yeah. What did you think the reason was for that? I honestly don't know. I figured maybe she's trying to test Sansa's loyalty a bit, or she's trying to give a signal like I'm being threat, like Patrick said, like I'm being threatening and scary. I don't know. It's a sign that I'm still, I'm, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to threaten to kill you, but I'm not going to kill you. I don't know. I'm intrigued by that. Move. I'm still hopeful she's just going to outsmart everybody. Me too. She doesn't need to threaten Sansa. And she right, did, though. So frustrating. Right. But I mean, she, when I say she doesn't need to, like, if she decides that Sansa needs to, to be killed, mm -hmm. she just do it. She can just do it. That's she a good point. She doesn't need to threaten her. So there's a reason why she's having this conversation with her. Uh, there's no reason to just threaten her and then just decide to kill her next week. There's, you know, she's laying down some kind of ground right. rules here. I mean, and she, her threat was to release the, uh, you know, the note to the Northern Lords to kind of undermine Sansa's power. I mean, it is her sister. I mean, Arya has had to, has had to talk herself into killing folk before, like Lady Crane last season. Like, she was assigned to kill her, didn't want to, and she waffled back and forth about it. Her sister might be the same thing, and we're not seeing her uh, struggle with it. I had one I wanted to bring up. Um, in the Take the Black podcast, which is recorded weekly on uh, winnerscoming.net, one of the contributors named Isis pointed out that um, it's hard for her to see her little brother, who's now grown up, in a, like she still sees him as the kid he was a bit, even though he might not deserve it, and he's done a lot of growing. And actually, I, I, I have a brother, to get a little personal note, who um, I didn't get along with terribly well as a child, and even today, I sometimes assume, even though we've both grown up a lot, I occasionally like, assume the worst of him, even though he, he might not deserve it. I mean, it's, 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 it's like an instinctual childhood mm -hmm. thing. And I, I think that applies to Arya a bit, because she right. knew Sansa when she was more naive, when she was a little more vain, when she was, you could believe more she'd be willing to betray her family because she loved Joffrey so much. And I think she's having a bit of a block now that, because they haven't seen each other in years and years and years, a bit of a block uh, accepting that Sansa is no longer that girl. And then Sansa 
can't understand that Arya, her little sister, is this crazy assassin lady. So she just, <laughs> of course, I mean, who would? Yeah. I mean, when she finds the faces in the room, can you imagine what that must have been like? Was that Walter Frey's uh, face? Yeah, it was. I think so, it's yeah. Nose. I looked at it, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think she's, um, you're right. That one of the last times they saw each other, um, you know, on the road to King's Landing, Sansa threw her under the bus um, right. and wouldn't lie to protect her. And so, you know, she, Arya, I don't think she's, Arya's completely unsympathetic toward what had happened to Sansa in King's Landing, but, Not completely. but she's, um, she's definitely letting her know that, like, get your act together, your act better be together, and you can, maybe you need to kind of prove it to me a little bit. Um, because she does have Littlefinger, and it is this sort of, as my wife mentioned last night, the, the warrior and the politician having this conversation and, and Arya is like, let's burn it to the ground and Sansa's like, that's, right. that's not going to work. So seeing how that dynamic, and obviously Littlefinger's got his mitts in here and what is, what is he trying to do? He's obviously trying to drive a wedge between yeah. the two of them. Wasn't he kind of coming to Arya's defense though when Sansa went to Littlefinger? He was. So what is, I don't understand what he's trying to do here. He's trying to pin them against each other, but then he's telling them to... I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to, so he planned the thing for Arya to find. She knew she would get mad about. I think he's trying to do what happened. He's trying to get Arya angry so she'll scare Sansa, so Sansa will come back to him and ask for advice, which she did. Yeah. And Littlefinger's thing is... Like he, he he's trying to drive a wedge between them, and he That's does that by phrasing it in a way that makes Sansa admit that Arya is capable of great things or, or bad things. He's like, I mean, surely Arya wouldn't, um, you know, threaten or harm you in any way. And he knows the answer is probably yes if she thinks Sansa will betray Jon. But he's making Sansa say it, so he doesn't look like the bad guy. Yeah. Okay. He's crafty. Got it. I'll, I, Here's the thing, and this has been the, show, the problem the show's had for years. I would be able to buy that Littlefinger is being convincingly sympathetic if he didn't have that like smoker villain voice that he's had forever. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's, you know, that's my problem. He's still Tommy Carcetti to me. <laughs> and and I've never seen that. Um, let's see, what are we going on here? Ooh, uh, Carrie asks, is, are you going to be the future hand of the queen? Could be fun. Dion th asks if uh, Sansa's might be on her list. That would be spooky. Not. I hope not, too. They're sisters. I doubt it. I think they're going to find a way to come together by the end of this, hopefully finding Littlefinger in the process. And uh, Kenny loves the dragons next to me. Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> we do, too. We're dragoned out over there. We are. We're, we have all three dragons and Bran, although, spoiler alert, one of these three isn't going to make it through the episode. We'll see which one. <laughs> Um, let's turn to Dragonstone here. We had one scene there, Daenerys and Tyrion chatting about what to do after Daenerys dies. Uh, Kayla, why is this topic important to discuss? Because they're putting all of their faith, hope, everything in her. Right. So if she dies, what then? So I think it's, it's fair to ask the question. It is. And she was not having it. She was like, don't worry about that until I'm wearing the crown. Why do you think she was so um, not wanting to have this conversation? Um, well, it would mean she would have to die. Right. I mean, no one's talking about the death. I don't think I want to have that conversation <laughs> either. She hasn't, she hasn't accomplished her goal yet. So She hasn't. She's not looking, she, what did she say? Something about, I'm not looking long term, I'm looking like right now, short term. Yeah. And she kind of lashed out at Terry and said that like, He's, you know, it, 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 He's siding with his family R through this. Rather than engage, she was like, well, you lost us Dorne and Highgarden. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, it's such an important d topic because this whole thing is, this whole show is a war of secession. Yeah. It's Robert dies, you don't want to do after he dies, and then his heirs battle for war. That's what the show is. So it's an important topic to have. And I love that Tyrion suggested maybe democracy. Like talking about the Iron Islands King's mood, talking about the Night's Watch choosing. Uh, Patrick, do you think Daenerys was justified in lashing out at him, or do you think she's letting her? Well, no, of course, of her? course not. I mean, it's a touchy subject for her. Right. She's evidently barren, um, and so, right. You know, that's that's upsetting thing to talk about. Um, and you know, Tyrion's right. Like, it's it it actually makes her safer if there is some line of succession because if you know. If she has an heir, then okay. people know, well, if I knock her off, somebody else is just going to step up. Every, mm -hmm. The loyalties are going to go to this person. Whereas if she's just like a, a one-hit wonder, 
then more people will be, you know, that maybe want to seize power might be more likely to try to assassinate her so they can, they can slip in among, amongst the chaos. As, what is it, Little Fingers, chaos is a ladder. Right. Um, so Tyrion's right. trying to prepare for every eventuality, and he, he knows that they're going into war, and people die in war, and there needs to be some sort of plan. And she's just, she's just not ready to have that conversation. And right. as we've seen with her, she's, she's not infallible. She didn't believe John right away, didn't do the right thing she right away. She wouldn't have, because zombies, man. Right, because zombies. Um, and, you know, and I think that she's, uh, she's got a little bit of that Targaryen temper. Right. which is coming out now more with as she becomes more and more confident whereas she started as a very timid and abused young girl she's mm -hmm. now a queen and so there is some of that temper there which makes her a much more interesting character right and the, the, the point that, that that you pointed out that i didn't get in the first room that i should have because i mentioned it like three times in the episode was the thing about her being barren and obviously the idea of secession is touchy for her because she can't have kids, which they, they said like three times this episode, so I, I guess they want us to pay attention to it. <laughs> um, by the way, Marnie uh, said, sorry Marnie McKay, please discuss why Brianna's going to King's Landing. Didn't get that, which we skipped over really quick. Yes, so Sansa gets an invitation, mm -hmm. I'm guessing from Tyrion, to attend this big uh, summit meeting in King's Landing, and she sends Brienne in her place. Why, Kayla? Uh, she wants to stay in the north, and um, Brienne does not think this is a good idea. She said, I need to stay here and protect you from Littlefinger. Mm -hmm. At least let me keep Podrick here. And she was like, should be a big help. No. So I, they're setting something up here, and I don't like it. Right. Um, uh, Helene Ferry Zayas says, so when Sansa and Arya collide, Brienne won't be there to stop them. Right. I, I don't like that she's not. I think there. there's a bit of subtext in there because Littlefinger pointed out that Brienne's is pledged to serve both Arya and Sansa. Mm -hmm. So I think part of the reason Sansa might be sending Brienne away is to um, make sure uh, Brienne can't intercede on Arya's behalf, which I think she fears a little bit. Mm. Patrick, any thoughts on this? Yeah, it's really weird. It's, it's interesting. I think it's mainly that she just doesn't want to go anywhere near Cersei Lannister, which who can blame her. Right. Um, but yeah, there was obviously Littlefinger Littlefinger wants to get Brienne out of the picture. And that's, I think, the big question. He wants Sansa to himself. I think he wants her to himself, but I mean, we don't know what his motives are. I mean, does he want to marry Sansa? Does he just want to use Sansa to, to get power? I mean, he didn't, he didn't have much of a problem throwing Kat over to the wolves, despite his, you know, claiming that he loved her. Um, so, you know, I, I wouldn't trust him. No. Don't trust Littlefinger. That's good advice for anybody. Um, I think the other thing is, I mean, of, of course she has to stay. I mean, Jon Snow is an absentee king at the moment, and everyone's a little miffed at him for that. If the person he left to mind the store also leaves, who's, got, who, who, who's in charge? Littlefinger? Arya? Do you mm -hmm. think that Littlefinger uh, knows how dangerous Arya is? No. I don't think anybody really could. I mean, she was on such a singular journey, doing such unique things, developing Liam Neeson's unique set of skills, like, you know, murder, face changing. <laughs> she, she's just such a unique beast. I'm not sure you could know how dangerous she is until you get really up close and personal. Yeah. It could be his downfall. It totally could be his downfall. Here's hoping. <laughs> uh, switching back to, okay, let's go back north of the wall. For the main reason we're here, y'all, which is to catch a white, bring it back, show it to Cersei, which hopefully will convince her to uh, turn over a new leaf. Fat chance with that. Um, so the folks after the polar bear attack, they come upon a white walker leading a band of his whites through a snowy clearing. Uh, Kayla, what do they do about it? And what does the ensuing battle tell us about how white walkers and whites operate? What do you mean? So like. So they get their white, they kill yeah, the bombs. others off. So they didn't want them to, they're keeping him alive, yes. They're keeping the one white alive, who I will call Biff. Um, so we're calling him on Wick. Uh, to, to bring back to Cersei. Okay. But I thought there was an important moment when they set their little trap for the white walker and they kill the white walker and most of the other whites die. Because of the fire? No, I think it's because, well Patrick, what'd you take from it? Well, I mean it seemed like it's sort of like cutting the head off the snake sort mm -hmm. of situation that whichever white walker 
turns the right person into a zombie that's what I got. Into a zombie if they're killed then the power is no more um, which I mean is super lame like <laughs> all but idea. one of them like he had turned yeah. all but one of them and it was so convenient right. it was so convenient that there was just like it was just Biff a little a little raiding party or whatever like just like why they're like, like scouting a, scouting what like there's a I know like them. scouting snow there's I don't a, know there's a million there. of them and they're basically unstoppable so you know it's, that just seems sort of silly <laughs> but like whatever I can buy it it's a war tactic they are an army so I mean sure. and to be fair there there actually were humans out to get them they just yes, didn't yeah, see it them. Was, it was good, good to have, but it was just kind of lame that, like, you know, uh, all but one died. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, um, but that's, I mean, it was super important information. Like, if there was, like, three of them that were right? still standing. See, like, that's what I don't get. Like, And wouldn't he take I, his own? I mean, I'd want to bring my own zombies with me. Maybe Biff just, like, tagged along. Yeah. And he, he, he didn't notice it. He's following. Or he likes this White Walker Dad, but it's real White Walker yeah. Dad. <laughs> I mean, it, the, 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 the odd thing about it was, like, I accepted it. Like, it was important information because now we know, like, kill the Night King, most of the whites die, which, which, is, which is big to know. Yeah. But, yeah, like, even if they just had, like, two-thirds of them die, it would have had the same effect and it would have just been a little more believable. Well, and this also isn't the first time one of those guys got smoked by John. Right. So, like, at Hard Home, like, we didn't see, like, a bunch of... We didn't. But to be fair, it was John and him Inside. in a little hut. Right. And for, for all we know, a bunch of them did die outside. We yeah. just didn't see it. We didn't see it. So it was kind of like... But, I mean, look, it's important information. They had to find a way to do it. It didn't bother me that much. It, was, it didn't. I just... Yeah. It's, it was... It's one of those things where, like, I, I just want to go in and, like, tweak it just so. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. just, I guess it needs to be tweaked just so. Yeah. Do you have a question? <laughs> uh, yeah, Michelle, when will they kill the Night King? When will they kill the Night King? Um, do you guys think killing the Night King is super, super endgame? Or do you think it'll happen earlier than that? Seems like that's like the, the last thing that's going to happen, or one of the last things that's going to happen. You would figure if he's the first one, then he's he, you know he's he could, for all we know, all the other whites could die if he's if he's killed if he's turned them or a lot of them because he raised the bulk of them at Hard Home. We right. saw him do it. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see, um, but yeah, I don't think it's going to happen until next season unless they're going to go oh sure major curveball and just do politics all the last season. Um, I would kind of, Kayla, what do you think of the idea that, like my personal pet theory is, I don't think it'll happen, but like the Night King dies, not early, but while there's still a chunk of time left, and that it's all a big fake out for some other kind of human conflict the last three episodes. Do you think the Night King is the goal of this show? Do you think we could get a twist? Oh, I didn't see that coming. I hope not, because I've said it before, this is where the show loses me. <laughs> I just like... No, no, I understand. I don't get into the zombie thing. Um, I, yeah, I, don't, I honestly don't know how this is going to play in, but I hope that... I mean, I hope that it's a person that comes into power, not the Night King. Sure. The it's the very first thing we see in the very first episode. Oh, that's true. Uh, my wife's long... She's, she's been annoyed since sort of the beginning a little bit that there wasn't mm -hmm. enough zombies, because she was like, I don't get it, like, there are zombies in the very first scene and then there just were hardly no zombies for you know many many episodes which is yeah. a fair which is a fair point um, sure but they needed to introduce the threat i have a question for you dan go ahead how far south do you think can they go all the way yeah why not you know it just i don't know it just seems like <laughs> when they when they've been talking about it in the show this year they have sort of talked about the north being the most vulnerable which uh, well, that makes sense yeah. but like you know is it like, is it down in Dorne, for instance? Is it, like, how cold is it going to get there? Can they come all the way down and, like, hang out in the desert? I mean, I don't think there's any reason they couldn't come all the way down. Um, Did they bring the cold? Do that you know I mean? like, is ambiguous, yeah. but it's, there's certainly evidence for it. Yeah. And I, I think in the books they make it more clear, mm -hmm. although it's still un a little ambiguous there. There's a good argument that they bring, that they bring the winter. They are winter. So uh, but it's not just they come that with means the winter. They can only live in winter. No, I think wherever they go, winter will follow. Oh. So I think they could totally go to Dorne. I mean, John certainly seems to think it's a problem for all seven kingdoms, not just one. And he wants to get all of them behind it. But they don't come every winter, right? Like, there's been recent winters that people in the show remember. Well, I mean, and there are no zombies. 
I mean, when I say they are the winter, I'm talking yeah. about metaphorically, right? Not right. But it's literally. like, is this this is like a long night type winter? Right. Yeah. This is for some reason we have no idea why they've been kind of chilling wherever they live for a thousand years, and now they're stepping up their game and making a proper assault on the wall. And I mean that that's the reason we have the show. That's not that's why we're looking at this period in Westerosi history and not like 200 years ago where nothing much of interest happened. Right. Like you know, we 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 go where the action is. Cool. But I don't know. I, I think they could totally come to Dorne. That would be fun. I, I'd watch that in season eight. Um, moving on. So they capture Biff. They capture the White. Yes. But he screams, and then the rest of the army dead comes Was running. Was that like his SOS call? Looks like yeah. Makes a big, loud, gross scream. He bites the hound's hand, which the hound does not like. No. Throws some rocks later. Um, John sends Gendry back to run to Eastwatch, and the rest of the team runs for a frozen lake and uh, gets stranded there. Kayla, what would you think of uh, the, the action sequence where they're running and the whites just tumble into the lake? I thought it was kind of cool. Um, yeah. This whole thing we kind of talked about off camera, I thought it was just all very predictable. Like, there's no way oh, this group expand. is going to die. Right, right. Super convenient Something lake. Something has to come save them. Yeah. It's super a convenient lake with a big, lake. rocky island in the middle. Right, right. yeah. It was just all very, <clears throat> I don't know, perfectly planned. Uh, so, yeah, they obviously are all falling into the lake. They are stranded on this rock for however long. What, what was the point of the hound? Was he just trying to entice them? Like, why would you want to bring them on you? I mean, he didn't know the ice was frozen. I think he was just ticked, and he didn't like them for biting his hand. And he's just like, screw you guys, which yeah. is very I the hound. I thought it was just like the anticipation of what was going to happen. And he finally just like lost it and was like, come at me, bro. Oh, oh, really? I didn't get I that. I don't know. <laughs> just typical hound. He's yeah, angry. Yeah, I thought it was just being a jackass and just, I mean, you're bored. They've been on that island for what has to be I days. I wouldn't want to bring them upon us, though. Like, I want them to keep their distance and oh, wait right. for help. But he didn't know that they could actually come to them. Yeah. Okay. He thought the, wa the ice would still break. And then they figured, all figured out together that it was hard enough for them to walk out. They would have figured it out eventually, but right. he tipped them off maybe a little. So early. nice going the hound, but I, I totally buy the hound would just be a jerk and chuck rocks at the dead guys across the way. I, I completely buy that. Yeah. Um, Patrick, do you think there was, it, the timeline's been criticized a bit just because it happened so quickly with Gendry running to Eastwatch, sending the raven, Daenerys gets it, and that then she swoops back fast. in. Well, I didn't, did, did that bug you at all? The Gendry part didn't bother me because I figured they were still really close to East Watch because right. the the you know the zombies are on the move. They're coming to the wall. Right. I mean, so, if you want to use the map, um, they left for East Watch. They were marching south from Hardhome, so they couldn't have gotten that far, like right. here-ish. Yeah. So I mean, it made that didn't bother me because um, I figured they were probably pretty close to the wall anyway. Mm -hmm. As far as the timeline with the 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 dragon. I mean, flying, you can, you can, yeah. flying's fast. It's like, quick, man. It's, that's, it's, that's, a, that's the fastest the way to travel in Westeros. 747s of Westeros. Flying the friendly <laughs> skies. So, no, I mean, the, the Raven um, maybe take a little bit longer uh -huh. to get there, but on that Dragon, I mean, it's basically a jet engine. So, no, nah, it didn't bother me. A couple days they were out there. Actually, it didn't, it didn't really bother me either. I know some people seem to be a little um, butt hurt, I think is the word about it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like we're used to seeing things play out over episodes, like between episodes, but just because it happens in one episode, time still clearly passed, so it didn't bother me that much. Do we have a, like a scale for Westeros? Like Fans have been scale. trying to do that for like literally decades, and I don't think that's an exaggeration. Um, I don't think so. I do not know, is this a mile? Is that a mile? Right. I'm sure if you ask how Anybody out there, if you what know how many miles, to? <laughs> um, good question. How many miles from East Watch by the Sea to Dragonstone? If anybody can do the conversion, um, have at it. By the way, uh, Carrie Jacobson asked if we're going to see an episode from the Night King's point of view, which I would love. Ooh, That'd be fun. Interesting. I doubt it. But wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't be a lot of dialogue. It's fine. It would be like a silent, creepy film. Yeah. Do you think he <laughs> talks though? Maybe he do can they talk? talk. I mean, they have not talked like so far. Their own language. They did actually have their own language in the show, but they cut those scenes because they thought it looked kind of seemed silly. Hmm. So they're just uh, silent but deadly. Um, communicate with looks and creepy glares. Don't talk. We have a question from Stephanie Wilson. Can Bran control the dead? 
Ooh, can Bran control the dead? Interesting question. I don't think so. But um, there's a theory that Bran and the Night King kind of have like similarish powers of uh, foresight and spookiness. I can see that. I think that's a question that the show will answer, um, or at least get closer to as it goes on. I'll be intrigued. Anyway, so uh, Daenerys gets the letter. She decides to go off to Dragonstone, even though Tyrion tells her not to. Kayla, good idea, bad idea. Should she have taken Tyrion's advice? I mean, they had no other choice. Like, it had to happen that way, so. I mean, she could have just followed his advice and not, not rescued John. But then they'd all die. That can't happen. <laughs> it was just so obvious. But like, sure. I'm glad she went. I'm glad she didn't listen to Tyrion's advice. Right. I mean, because it hasn't been working well for them lately. So it hasn't. I think she's just over it. Like, you know what? I'm gonna do my own thing. See ya. And I buy that she would. She's she she's the heroic type, the healthy yeah. type. So I can see it. But that was literally. I feel like that was the only option to say for the that. show. For the show, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, I like that you're correct, Paul. He was, he was wrong. Um, I mean, John's an ally. He's got a power to the, to the north. Um, it was, was it dangerous? Yes. But uh, it was definitely the right call, and she was the only one that could do it. So, she you know, Tyrion's not, he's not infallible either. He makes mistakes. He's, his default position is, is caution. Right. He's, and that's, that's what you need in uh, a hand, right? If you're a, if you're a Daenerys type. So. Um, it worked out, and she did lose a dragon, so... I mean, no, I was going to say, the, the <laughs> counter argument to that is if she hadn't gone, not only would she still have all three dragons, one wouldn't be on the other side. Her right, baby. but if she hadn't gone, John would be dead. Presumably he'll be able Been to... Been there, done that. I mean... Right. Um, but John would be dead, and they would, she would be lacking critical information that she True. needs. Mm -hmm. I mean, what they learned up there, like, I don't think bringing the white down the series is going to make any difference because she's crazy. But, like, I think that knowing that how to beat these guys, that you don't have to defeat every single zombie, uh, you just need to defeat one or maybe a couple. It's important it's information. Huge information. To right. Know. And that's worth, that's worth one dragon. All right. Well, let's talk about that because the big action moment is the dragon comes down, Viserion, he's swooping down. And the Night King sees him in the distance, decides, hefts his ice spear, Olympic throws it like a javelin <laughs> uh, punter. It's quite an Stabs arm. him, he goes down, everyone's upset, crashes into the lake. It's horror, it's awful, it's the Hindenburg times a thousand. And Viserion is gone, <laughs> out of our lives. <laughs> Did this moment land for you, Kayla? I was very sad. I mean, yeah, anytime there's a dragon scene where they're flying in, I always get goosebumps. It's, right, it's just it's cool, fun. it's cool. Um, and the music, and I wasn't expecting this at all. Like, I didn't see it coming until he pulled out of his ice spear, and then I was like, well, this can't be good. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I thought it was really sad. And then watching Daenerys' face. Right, she sold it well. Yeah. She was just like, no, like, watching him gushing blood through the air and then landing on the ice and sinking in. I thought it was very sad. That's like her child. Right, it was effective. It was. Even though we don't really know him, like, the, that particular dragon, he's like, one of the other two, mm -hmm. it, it still landed for me. Patrick, yeah, I didn't cry, but it. No, I mean I'm not. Get right crazy. here. Well, I was hoping we get to see a, a third person riding a dragon at some point. Sure. And I think the assumption here is that John's going to be able to ride one of these guys. Um, this dude. Yeah, uh, and so I was kind of I was intrigued by the who's the third person? Is there another Targaryen? Like, right. Oh. Now that's probably not going to happen. Um, so I'm a little bit bummed about that. But yeah, I mean, you know. It was good and really important because they just, Westeros has the deck stacked with these dragons, right? And, right. You know, they can kill them very easily, swoop in, and so they have to have some kind of, just like Cersei needed Kyburn's like crazy weapon spear thing, mm -hmm. the, the, the White Walkers needed something to be able to fight back with too. And now, not only can they fight back and kill the dragons, but as we saw at the end of the episode, they can turn them. So. What's it going to be? Is it going to shoot fire? Or is it going to shoot like blue, like freeze everybody? Today? Oh, fun! Right? <laughs> it's got to be ice, right? Um, blue. I mean, blue fire is hotter. I don't know. We'll see. But will it be hot? Be like, fun. or will it be like a, you know, a freezing ray instead <laughs> of the fire? Like these guys I'm don't sure like we'll fire. find fire out soon. Bad for them. That's true. I hate fire. It's 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 gonna be fun to watch. They're gonna go full fantasy on us. Sorry, Kayla. I can I can already okay. see it. <laughs> the evil knight zombie king riding his dragon, breathing ice breath. It's just it's going to be so 
beyond Lord of the Rings. It's going to be very expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. Really expensive. Did you watch yeah. the, the um, inside the episode stuff? I did. The special features about how much money they must have spent to create. Like they, they poured cement into like a quarry or something to make that lake. It, right. It, bulldozers and it's absolutely insane. Wow. Yeah. I don't know it's on TV. Um, hard to believe a show will come along again when it just has when it has that right combination of like like ambition and huge popularity and willingness to actually do this stuff. Yeah. It's a it's it's a unique piece of this show. <laughs> anyway, after Daenerys gets the, the hell out of Dodge before he can kill another of her dragons for babies, um, John pulls himself out of the water. Another Again. scene you just loved. And I mean, it was fine, it was cute, but it's just like, come on. <laughs> like, it's just another kind of hero moment that just... Game of Thrones always kind of made its, 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 its reputation on being like really kind of grounded in reality. So to see like an action movie hero shot like that, where he's pulling stuff out of the ice, it's a little eye-rolly, but it's fun too. Action movies, I like action movies. Anyway, Ben Jen Stark, cold hands, comes riding up on his horse, knocking whites left and right, and uh, gets shot on his horse and sends him back to Eastwatch. Which was another moment where you're like, okay, something has to happen to get John out. There it is. Right. Just predictable. So it wasn't really emotional for you seeing Benjen no, start? I mean, I, it's John Snow. He's not gonna, they're not going to kill him off. Right. Um, it's just sort of, yeah, it was kind of like, and then he's like, I can't come with you. There's no time. And I'm right? like, you could have mounted up right then. <laughs> Hey, what are you talking about? The time it took you to say there's no time, you could have been getting on the horse. I mean, I think that he probably was maybe hoping he can die now. Because um, that seems pretty uh, not fun. Hanging no. out there by yourself, being, being a half zombie, dead, half alive no. person. You have your um, horse for a friend. I didn't think, like, we talked about this before the episode. I didn't think the scene needed to happen. I don't think he needed to go on the ice. I think they just wanted to close the Benjamin Stark loop, loop. and let let John see him, and that's why, that's why they did it. Right, it was fine. Yeah, I, I agree with you too. It's just, I don't know. If, 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 if you're going to bring Benjamin back for that quick a reunion and then have him say there's no time, even though there's like a slow-mo pan away after that and he has, like, goes and fights the wife, there was clearly time, Benjamin. Yeah. Um, just, just another one of those moments I want to go in there and just tweak it just so to have something a little different. What would you have done? I would have have there actually be no time if he's if he's going to claim that just make it so that he clearly has no choice but to go fight the whites rather than have him put john on a horse say his goodbyes and then have him like ride away for a good 30 seconds while he goes back and faces the whites i'm still kind of confused what his situation is so he's not a white but he like, is he's a not white in zombie mode yeah, he's a, he is a white, but he was animated by the children of the forest rather than the white walkers, and they made sure to bring him back with his brain still intact. He's like Beric Dondarrion, the guy with the eye. He's like John, only John is technically a white. Hmm, Think about he's it. Died. He looks a little more worse for the wear, though. He's oh, yeah, because he was dead for, I think, longer. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe a different kind of zombie. I think George R. R. Martin said that... Uh, most of the whites are animated by ice, and John and Berg are animated by fire. Mm. Ice and fire doing the whole thing. Mm. Cool. But technically, they're all whites. They're all zombies. Just some are uh, brought back sooner than others, and uh, they also have their minds intact, though. Okay. Because of that, Daenerys finally uh, found out, kind of a preview for next week, that uh, John at least. A has great abs and B has a lot of stab wounds. That scene was yeah. I, said, I, t I turned to I turned to my wife and I Steamy. said, "Chicks dig scars and they dig abs, and he's got them both." <laughs> that that pan down his yeah, body yeah. was. And she was like nice. staring. Like I'm not sure which had the bigger impression on her, but she was impressed or scared or something. Um, I think she believes now that he was killed. She's heard the whispers of right. him coming back from the dead, and and they. And was that he, he took a knife for yeah, his people. He clearly was stabbed up pretty bad. But they didn't talk about it specifically. No. Instead, she sat by his bedside, waited for him to wake up. Holding his hand. Holding his hand, and then oh. committed herself fully to the night, to fighting the Night King. And he offered to bend the knee to her. <sighs> Kayla, how did this scene work for you? Is there romance in their future? <laughs> did you want the romance in their future? Are these two destined in the stars? I am still not on board with it. I really? know everyone wants it to happen, and everyone loves this connection they have, but... Mm -hmm. It's his, it's his aunt. Right. I almost forget that. I can't get that. past that. 
I saw something funny. Someone tweeted. Uh, they were like, "Ew, Cersei and Jaime incest, gross." And they're like, "Oh, John and Danny, get it on, get it on with your aunt or something." <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I just because I know they're somehow related. It, I don't want it to happen. Patrick, Patrick are you um, are you pro romance, which means you're pro incest, or um... <laughs> incest is the Targaryens thing, man. It like, is the Targaryens. Thing. Um, yeah, I mean it's not, and and like he's. He's only half a Targaryen. He so, is half Targaryen. You know, they can, it's be much better for the gene pool. Um, <laughs> so, no, I don't have a problem with it. Why not? Like, I mean, they've obviously been setting this up. There's a reason, you know, she left Dario behind and it's not just to, to look after Marine. Um, <laughs> it's for plot. So, uh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna do it. Um, <laughs> it's happening. For sure. It's going to go down. And uh, good for them. Good for them. They're working she hard. Do you know what's weird about the show? There's what's not that? anybody that I want to be like romantically involved with each other. Is that weird? I like that. I, I like that Game of Thrones um, takes that. a bit of a different no approach. Because I, 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 I feel like romance dominates a lot of shows. Like there's a love story at the center. There's no one on the show that I'm like, oh, I, they have to be together. You're I not. You're not pro Tormund and Brienne. Brienne Jamie. I kind of like Brienne Jamie, but I don't think it would happen. I right. love John and. You agree? Red. Yes. Yeah, they were good together. I like them. But yeah. other than that, I'm like... Sansa's had nobody. Poor Sansa. Cersei and Euron, maybe. Ew. No, I don't like that at all. You don't? They're both crazy. They're both crazy. But, but I mean, work. I don't want them to have any happiness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I'm more with you. I, I mean, just uh, taking the incest part out, I thought the scene worked. I thought they both sold it. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was effectively romantic. And But then you're right. And then I get reminded, oh, yeah, they're related. It's a little creepy. <laughs> But um, just as a scene, I thought it worked, and I think that's where they're going. Um, and they're 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 good for like they're both hero types. They both like to help people in need. I can see I think it maybe working. That's the thing, because they're both so high in power that mm -hmm. coming together is going to make them vulnerable and weak. That's possible too, which would also be a good story. I'd be willing to for all of that. By the way, uh, Julie Davies love John Danny's scene, and Johnny Espinoza can't get past Kayla's shoes. Thank you. Is that a compliment? I don't know. I couldn't tell. I think it is. <laughs> Take it as one. That, that, that's my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Sandra says Missandei and Grey Worm, right? Uh, oh, come on. That's a good couple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what she's getting out of it. Even but... that? <laughs> Emotional support. Okay. And like we saw, I mean, they hey, managed to have knows, sex. He knows how to do his thing. <laughs> Make his partner happy. And now the second one of the show, we tiptoe around <laughs> saying dirty words. <laughs> um, finally, the preview for next week. We have the finale of season seven, untitled as of yet. Are you hey. sad? It's already over. It, 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 it seems, started, it seems quick. Like. It does. It seems very quick. Yeah, of course I'm sad. I'm, I mean, I I'll, I'll, won't miss having to stay up until 5 a.m. on Sunday nights How to do this. Night? About 5. Which was, I mean, better than usual because I got to do some stuff ahead of time. Were you tired this morning when you got dressed? Um, no. You know what happens? I tend to be okay in the morning, and then as the day goes on, I will, it'll, it'll, it'll start to hit me later. For now, I'm great. I was just asking because your shirt's on inside out. Oh, my God. Why do the point that aren't here? <laughs> it looks good. It looks I noticed good. it earlier. It is inside out. This is very embarrassing. <laughs> Listen. Dan is working so hard Dan right now. Dan works so hard guys... for y'all. We tried okay, to give me a sec. off <laughs> during the season, and he comes into work anyway. 5 a.m. Okay, I was, was up to up that. Every, That's why. Every week he's been up until 5 a.m. Workaholic here. You can wear your shirt however you want. Well, thank you. I want to thank you. Your shoes are great, and my shirt's on inside out. <laughs> Nobody would have even noticed. I know. I, just, I know. Now they all know. Dan, everyone loves you. It's fine. It'll just make them love you more. I'm just yeah, well, you're, you look great. <laughs> it's okay. a poll. You can't even tell. Wait. Yeah, you couldn't. Now you can. <laughs> you should leave it like well, that. Well, first, first I saw anyway, the buttons. First I saw the buttons. I was like, that's funny. I blame the late nights. Anyway, <laughs> more people talking about this, I wonder. <laughs> okay. That's why we they, love they're, you. they're really not. Johnny Espinoza likes the inside out shirt better than the shoes. Oh. Same. Got against her shoes. Actually, same. Or he likes yeah. your shirt better than Kayla's shoes. I think the that's what he means. Because he also commented on, on your shoes earlier. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah. um, We're off track. <laughs> what are you looking forward to next week, Patrick, and or dreading? Mm. Um I'm not I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to anything really. It's gonna be interesting seeing them all in one place. Uh, if I had to dread something, I would be that. 
seriously, she's probably going to try to do something crazy. Um, <laughs> Blow something she's up. Got all of her, she's going to get all of her enemies in the same place. Right, we know uh, that looks grows. like they're having it in some neutral territory somewhere. It's at the Dragon Pit. It looks in like King's the place Landing. where Danny came in and swooped in with a dragon from a few seasons back. <clears throat> hmm. The fighting pits. Oh, oh yeah, it does a little bit. Do yeah, it, I mean, similar setup. It is a different pit. It's a. It's the dragon or where pit the guy's head exploded. where historically the Targaryens kept the dragons before they died out and then it fell into disrepair. Do you understand how much side eye we're going to be getting in this episode? Like even from the preview, it was all side eye. It was everybody giving each other side eye. I'm looking forward the to that. I love side eye. Incre- yeah, it's going to be just one big side eye. Like, so it's is be it? Great. They're all meeting there to show her the white? Yeah. Okay. And to just kind of have their negotiation. So it'll be Cersei and Tyrion and Jon Snow and Bronn and Jaime and uh, Brienne apparently. Yeah, so that's all in the same room. Um, and the Hound, I think it, it, it seemed like the Hound was going down Who's there. Who's going to die? Someone's going to. Who do you think to. will die? I don't want anyone to die. Are we going to get the gang back together though? All right, if I'm looking forward to anything, if Brienne's <laughs> taking Pod with her and Bronn and Tyrion are going to be there. They should be there together. That's yeah. what I want. Oh. That's what I want to see. I, I mean, it, 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 it sounded like she was, because Sansa refused the offer to leave Pod behind. So yeah, that, that could totally happen. Because we didn't get that, like, Bronn Tyrion reunion. It didn't happen on screen. No. Like, they obviously communicated, but we missed, the, and they had such a bromance. I mean, we'll have all three Lannister siblings in the same room. I'm still nervous what's happening together. in Winterfell with Sansa and Arthur. Of course. Yeah, that's important, too. Um, I'm very nervous, actually, about that. Hopefully... They can end it peacefully. We don't have a sororicide on our hands. That's your vocab word for the day. All right. Um, thank you so much, Patrick, for being on the yeah, show. Happy to do it. Hi, everybody. This was a fun episode. We got one more week left. It feels like it's been like the blink of an eye, and it's been feels like it's been forever. It's uh, <laughs> called new promotions. It's a nice distraction for summer, though. Yeah. It's August. Mm-hmm. Not a lot going on. Who needs Game the beach? Fun. Exactly. Yeah. And we have an eclipse. We do have an eclipse, so happy, happy, eclipse, happy day. eclipse day. The eclipse without your glasses. Don't look right at it. <laughs> um, and we will be back next Sunday at 10 a.m. Monday. Monday, inside <laughs> out shirt. Don't know days of the week. <laughs> next Monday at 10 a.m. Monday for the final episode of Wick Live for season seven. And afterwards, we'll be breaking it down on future episodes, looking back at the season, and bringing you more fun content in the weeks ahead. Valor Margulis, y'all.